Here we are, Machine Gun Kelly's new album, Mainstream Sellout, is finally here. This journey we've been on of MGK releasing emo and pop punk has been a long and strange one. To recap, this all really started in 2019 when MGK tweeted that his next album was going to be a rock album, then later clarifying it was going to be a pop punk album. Then we saw MGK dancing on conference room tables. I've always had questions about this video. First off, why? Like, was this some big scheme to release this on Instagram so that MGK and fans would just be like, oh yeah, this is really punk of MGK to do dancing around conference room table, what a rebel. Uh, was MGK just overtaken by the power of music that I'm sure was blasting in those speakers? I always imagine it's like 10 a.m. and I always feel bad for like a record employee. That In my head, I always imagine a record label employee just coming in, assuming this is going to be something you know boring meeting in a giant conference room and then you have you know mgk blasting his music at 10 a.m you know dancing around uh, your your laptop and coffee and, and paperwork that's placed on the table in addition to that mgk has covered swing life away by rise against and misery business by paramore and also released the nostalgia filled i think i'm okay with young blood and travis barker and all of that takes us to today and mainstream sellout to add context to all of this on a more broad scale, I don't know if revival is the right word to use, but there's definitely been a lot of talk online through various articles, a lot of course dealing with MGK and his new album, about an upcoming, not even upcoming, that we are in another pop punk and emo revival. And there really is no doubting that there's been a flood of mainstream music recently that does sound like emo and pop punk. You have MGK, of course, and then Willow, Little Lotus, Olivia Rodrigo, Demi Lovato saying they're going to burn all of their pop music and go full punk rock, and of course, the return of Avril Lavigne. And to be clear, I'm not hating on this new music. I actually really love the new Avril album. My point here is that we haven't seen this much emo, pop, punk, alternative music, whatever you want to call it, in the mainstream in a very long time. In an interview with Billboard titled Machine Gun Kelly, The New Prince of Pop Punk, he details his dive into the scene, and before moving into the quotes from that article, the article does reference MGK as Baker, his last name. His last album, 2020's Tickets to My Downfall, channeled his long-simmering inner adolescent angst into addictive TRL-era pop punk and debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. At that time, it was the first rock album to do so in over a year, making MGK the rare rock artist not circling AARP membership to top that chart in recent memory. Haters would say Sid Vicious is rolling in his grave. To them, Baker would like to say, get over yourselves. It opened the lane back up for people to make money. It opened up these festivals. He says of the pop punk revival, he's helping fuel. Rock needed a defibrillator. Who cares who gives it, just as long as that MFR doesn't die. Is it strange that the face of Pop Punk 2.0 was best known not too long ago as a moderately successful white rapper? Not for an artist who likened himself to Jackass's Steve-O on his 2011 breakout hit Wild Boy, who insisted on leading a live band and playing guitar on stage back when his only chart hits were pop rap team-ups with Junior Varsity Divas who was covering Blink-182 songs in concert long before he tapped the group's drummer, Travis Barker, to become his main producer. Nor is it strange to anyone who has observed the collision course that rap and rock have been on for a few years already, as late artists like Little Peep and Juice World married hard-hitting beats with the visceral edge and open vein lyricism of alternative rock and emo music. I think people try to put it in a box, what rock or alternative music can be, says Baker's label boss, Interscope Geffen A&M chairman and CEO, John Janik. MGK is the definition, right now, of a rock star. And he hates it all the same when detractors suggest he is a pop-punk poser, a mere tourist who will pack up and leave whenever a genre stops suiting him. I know it kills certain bands in that community that I got the success that I got, but I earned that stuff, he says as he schools me in a chess game. Dude, I was effing loading up the van with our drums and amps in 2010, driving to Indiana and Chicago playing Warp Tour. I can tell you the effing Wi-Fi codes to venues in Blackfoot, Idaho. Can you say that stuff as a band? The entire article and interview is linked down below, but I hope that gives some insight into what MGK is thinking and what he thinks about the backlash that he's receiving from the scene. And now, let's dive into Mainstream Sellout. 
right away I think it's a mistake to not open off the album with the title track mainstream sellout from the intro to the lyrics it would have been the perfect opener and it also happens to be one of the catchiest songs on the album in my opinion the song itself is basically Machine Gun Kelly's reply to all the hardcore fans of emo and pop punk with the lyrics I heard the feedback, I'm a poser, with a guitar and a choker, hiding under sunglasses, I made an album, they hate the track list. Leave the scene, you're ruining it, leave the scene, you're ruining it, you sold out and it makes me sick, so leave the scene, you're ruining it. And since it deals with the backlash that Machine Gun Kelly is facing from the scene, we can't forget this TikTok. Oh my God, guys, why didn't you tell me there was a group of emo guardians on social media declaring what's emo or not and that I didn't make the cut? Emo, 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 emo. Instead, the album opens up with Born With Horns, which was the original album title for the record, and it really does set the stage for the rest of mainstream sellout. It almost feels like mainstream is the natural progression from tickets to my downfall i wouldn't say that mainstream is more emo or more pop punk than his previous efforts on tickets just that it's the obvious next step with god saves me machine gun kelly focuses on depression mental health and suicide a number of songs on the album god saves me 5150 and die in california all focus on those topics World War 4 is the sequel to World War 3 from Tickets to My Downfall, and it's a fast, just over a minute punk song. Really reminds me of Built This Pool and Bohemian Rhapsody from the Blink record California. Fan favorite, really short songs that everyone wishes were just a little bit longer. Lil Wayne makes an appearance on two songs, Drug Dealer and A, but those features really didn't stand out to me. Fake Love Don't Last and Die in California are the quintessential MGK pop punk songs with rap features, and then the album ends with an acoustic love ballad. And I also saw a lot of talk online before the albums released about all the features on this album, one notably being Pete Davidson, but his part on this album is just a 30 second uh, audio clip of him talking and leading into the title track. And that's mainstream sellout. Is it better than Tickets to My Downfall? It's more of Tickets to My Downfall. If you didn't like Tickets, I don't think anything on Mainstream Sellout is going to change your mind. But I do think the album is going to perform well. It mixes nostalgia with a modern sound that we know does well based on the success of Tickets to My Downfall. Now, will this album change how the scene views Machine Gun Kelly? That, I don't know. I think MGK and these other big artists get a lot of hate from the scene because fans of that type of music don't see these big artists as being genuine. Fans of pop punk, emo ska, hardcore, etc., alternative music as a whole, you know, we value and view these young bands, these bands that aren't as popular, that have been in the scene forever, we view them as, as heroes and legends that mean so much to us and have helped us through a lot of difficult times in our own lives. And these are the bands and artists that are sleeping on floors, sleeping in vans, hoping to sell enough merch to make touring financially viable, taking PTO from their day jobs just to tour in the first place, and everything else that goes into being a band. Again, we see these bands as heroes and legends, and we admire them for everything that they do for us, whether it's connecting with the lyrics or so we can go see them on tour, whatever the, the heartfelt you know, memories and relationship we have with these bands. And then when the big artists come in, the scene reacts, I think, so negatively uh, towards them. I've seen the term industry plant a lot in conversations around this. It seems like the scene reacts so negatively because on some some level we feel that these big artists coming in are taking chances away from our favorite bands and making it big. I'm not the biggest fan of MGK. I was of course aware of him, but he really didn't get onto my radar until the tickets to my downfall era, so I can't really speak to the aspect of him leaving the rap world for the alternative music scene, but I can speak to the impact that he's already had. I of course talk about the scene, you know, pretty much all the time, and friends and family know that, and MGK releasing emo and pop punk has gotten to them. Through all the digital clutter that we have, through all the content that is out there, him releasing emo and pop punk has gotten to them. Some of them just like it because it's nostalgic and it reminds them of the early 2000s sound, or they didn't even know that emo and pop punk was still around and there were new bands making music that sounded like that. So my only hope for all of this, well one of my big hopes uh, with these big artists making music 
music in the alternative scene is that there's better things around the corner for the scene as a whole. Hopefully people click on videos like this or articles like this so they can learn about newer bands in the scene. Bands like Your Future Teens, Oso oh Oso, oh so, uh, Meet Me at the Altar, Oxymorons, I could go on. And hopefully these bigger artists interact with the scene on that type of level. Hopefully they take out some of these artists and bands on tour or even just tweet about them. That would uh, do a lot as well. At least that is my hope for what happens next in the scene. What did you think of Machine Gun Kelly's new album, Mainstream Sellout? Let me know down in the comments below. Please like and share the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Tell all your friends. Follow me on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching. Emo, 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 emo!